गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम in any field we will see the successful people are only handful they are not 12 to a dozen what is the reason the reason is many of us put efforts but our earlier efforts are cancelled by the subsequent performance for example we decide something now the decision has to be followed by action but by the time we want to take the action we again change our own decisions and the result is thinking is plenty working is plenty but progress is zero the best example that i can think of is there was one girl who used to come for my lectures very smart girl so i asked her what do you do she says swami ji i am a stay no in a office i said very good now you when you listen my talks take the dictations she says swami ji i am already doing that without your telling i said you should not do it without my permission then she started telling <coughs> swami ji <coughs> how to ta- stop suffering i said what are you suffering steno has no suffering it is the boss who suffers because of the steno is it swami ji it is the other way around what is that then she told swami ji you don't know our miseries my boss for example she told that uh, <clears throat> suppose there is a letter he will press the bell call me i'll go there ha come on take the dictation the letter will be given to me with reference to this letter that number so and so subject so and so ha ah, right now dear sir we are highly obliged to receive your valued order and as per your specifications and the time schedule the order will be executed we generally honor the order when it is placed with 50% advance and the 50% is on the date of delivery we once again thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you looking forward for your next letter now i go with that letter to type it by the time i am reaching my table again the bell goes trrr, again i come back uh cancel that first draft right again then second dictation we are thankful to you for your order how you are you know these days the labor and the electricity failure problems are making our life miserable the goods should be supplied according to our schedule and you will have to pay all the things in advance thanking you in anticipation then i go and start the moment has started punching few keys here and there again the bell goes again i come back look here that letter which i dictated you cancel that anyway tomorrow i am going on leave let somebody take responsibility why should i take now see when we are not able to take a decision and execute it in our life we cannot progress and this is common whether you are working on the material front or on the spiritual front keeping this in mind the teacher says in the third verse of the seventh chapter manushyanam sahasreshu kashchit yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kashchin mam veti tatvatah yesterday the teacher told us hey arjun this is such a great knowledge having known which nothing more remains to be known 
what is the greatness of this kind of knowledge for example if you are a very good doctor that does not mean you are a happy person if you are a very good liar that does not mean you are a happy person you may be an excellent wife that doesn't mean that you are blessed with a equally good husband so all our knowledge is in the material field do not guarantee happiness in our life what is the use of all the prosperity and we are prosperously miserable what is the use of that therefore the teacher says this is such a knowledge once you get this knowledge having got this knowledge there is nothing more to be achieved in this world you attain fulfillment you uh, attain contentment of your existence if such is the great knowledge sir that you are talking about why don't people opt for it why don't people walk this path that you are talking about the teacher says look here my friend there are many people who attempt on this path this is not the monopoly of the dadi walas no if dadi walas were to be the wise people all our sardars would have been wise isn't it but it is the otherwise condition <laughs> dadi has nothing to do with, with wisdom so what is the reason that this is not happening to this possible question the teacher says arjun it's not the people don't want to walk the spiritual path they do walk how many of them manushyanam sahasreshu thousands and thousands of people do take this path however one rare individual puts forward the effort in the right direction see first is putting efforts and second is putting efforts in right direction a lot of difference that is how some people are very successful in business or investment and some people are very very failure because their timing their judgment is totally wrong so those who are putting efforts thousands of them very few of them take the right course what is the right course sir be very attentive the teacher says manushyanam sahasreshu kashchit yatadi siddhaye one among millions are able to put forward in the right direction all the efforts what is the right direction siddhaye what is the siddhi siddhi is only one according to bhagavad gita and that is pure heart how many of us have ever sincerely tried now we are all professionals in satsang isn't it our prem puri is providing you such wonderful uh, masters on the field of spiritual horizon that you are not short of getting the professional knowledge so you are all professionals now look within don't tell panti mutti sawal aage look within how many of us have ever sincerely tried for this what is that oh lord let my mind become so pure that i am able to see the divinity in every being around me see we take for granted that my mind is pure we take for granted that i am thinking right we take for granted that i am all right we take for granted that there is nobody better than me we take for granted that i am doing the right things see therefore bhagwan says many are putting efforts to walk the spiritual path but very few are trying for this one thing therefore please be very attentive there are three areas where our attention is diverted when we interact in the world first area the area of objective existence 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू ना वाइल आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू वेर इज माई अटेंशन इज माई अटेंशन ऑन द ऑडियंस वन और इज माई अटेंशन ऑन द एक्सपीरियंस दैट आई एम गोइंग थ्रू और इज माई अटेंशन ऑन आई द वन हु इज डिलीवरिंग द टॉक थ्री प्लेसेस सी वेन ए पर्सन इज परफॉर्मिंग ऑन द स्टेज no the singers professional singers not uh, meera bai not kabir ji they were not professionals the professional is take the peti and start the qawwali teri chunari <laughs> that time where is the attention attention is neither on theory nor on chunari attention is how the people are appreciating my performance isn't it so when we are functioning interacting in this world where is our attention this is first point to be very clearly and sincerely observed in our life where are we looking at it? now second thing is when we are interacting with the world are we getting lost in our own experience how we get lost in our own experience every experience is constantly compared with other experiences of similar kind for example here i am talking to you and while talking to you suddenly i'll remember see i went to that place here you see how disciplined the crowd is how attentive they are but you know when i went to that place what kind of rowdy crowd of bihar my god the other day i received a phone from patna of all the places in the world swami ji you have to come here i said where are you maharaj here yeah, i am in uh, bihar I said, my God! I said, where are you in Bihar? In Patna. I said, I'll come, but is it like yato gatya, yat gatwa na nivardante tadhava paramam mama? Will I come back to Bombay? He said, Swamiji, don't worry. I am the chief of the security of the great uh, leader. I said, my God, are you threatening me to come or what there? So. when i am delivering lectures to you now this experience is being compared with the other experiences so when i get lost in the objective world i go away from myself when i get lost in the experiences in comparisons i have not taken care of the quality of the mind that is left behind as a result of the interaction third when i am interacting with the world if the attention is on the time see here these people are very dull people you know in our bombay a small joke you cut and everybody really really laughs and in this place where god has sent me you go and sit there and even take a screw driver and put in their arm pits even then they will not laugh as if they have taken a vow i get frustrated to such kind of audience you are a very intelligent audience so i i i is developing friends when we are interacting with the world if our attention is how the mind is left behind after the interaction if the mind is left behind as pure as before the interaction began after the interaction is over if we are aware of this fact then we are going in the right direction now one or two examples i'll give about this the other day i went to um, varanasi and there was one couple with me they came 
So, I like teasing people and enjoy. So, we went through a small lane. And you know Varanasi? Small lanes, long, long, miles together you walk. There is nothing you can see. Hardly three feet wide. And in that, the people are, the children are playing cricket. Both sides, gutters are open. Pan shops are there. In that, the Shivji's bulls walk comfortably. Rikshawala goes. Motorcycle comes. And human beings also walk somehow. And the road is not proper. All stone kept. They lose and move like that. So I took them, instead of going by the main road, I said, let us go this way. When we were going, they were so frustrated, Swamiji, as they talked to me after we see Shiva. I am now in communion with him. They have no choice. Struggling, we reached there now. Everything was over. Swamiji, shall I talk to you now? I said, okay, vomit. He said, why did you say vomit? I said, because I know what is coming. He said, Swamiji, do you call this as uh, Hinduism? I said, what is Hinduism? I am not seeing anything anywhere. See the roads. I said, no, we call this as a road. This is not Hinduism. See, the bulls are walking. This is Hinduism. I said, no, this is bulls. See, in this small lane, the children are playing cricket and, oh, it's so terrible. I said, look here. Now lift your vision from these things and look at the faces of the people. Have you seen anybody with a frown on the face? Everybody is so cheerful and happy. And everybody very comfortably emptying his mouthful. Joy. Anywhere. There is no complaint by anybody about anything. I said, why don't you look at this? See, when we interact with this world, you have gone to take darshan of Lord Shiva. Are you seeing at that? See how important it is. If our attention is, we have gone to take the Shiva's darshan, if we are the devotee of Shiva, Nothing else will ever matter to us. But if we have gone to that holy place as the sanitation inspector, other than dirtiness, nothing will be seen. You have taken the responsibility to go there as a cleaner, clean the whole world. I told him, I said, look here. If you want to see life and people live in India, if you want to see roads and the cars and the bangalows and the landscaping, leave India. There is no need to live here. India is not a land. India is people. Not knowing this, we get lost only in the non-essentials. Therefore, friend, why our India is a spiritual land only because... Attention is on the purification of the heart. Therefore, how do we know that we are walking in the right direction? Always keep this barometric reading. How is our mind before, during and after the interaction in this world? If we are at peace with ourselves, we will be at peace with the world. If we are in pieces with it. The other day I was talking to somebody. Swamiji, um, what you have decided about your life? I said, see, I have given my body to my Shah. I said, he decides what to do with this body. And legs, I said, legs I have given to this girl. She presses my legs all the time. I have given my legs. Brain, I said, is not there. There is no problem. Then one girl asked, Swamiji, what about your heart? I said, Tukude hajar huye. <laughs> Kaha bache? See, once we have decided that we are in this world to express the divine joy, 
then the responsibility is the instrument of mind should be capable of manifesting that inherent divinity in us. It is possible only when our mind is at peace, pure and tranquil. Now, in this, there is no problem. Swamiji, should we chant Gayatri Mantra? And then there are 101 confusions about that. Swamiji, somebody says Gayatri Mantra should not be chanted by ladies. But why? See how many confusions. One person asked me this question, one lady, a social worker. Social worker ladies are very dangerous. So she asked me this. Swamiji, why our Hindus are not allowing this uh, Gayatri Mantra to be chanted by the ladies? I said, uh, you are allowed to chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Are you chanting? <laughs> no. You are allowed to observe fast on Ekadashi. Are you observing? <laughs> no. This is known to the scriptures. This is known to the God. So what they did? They wanted you all to chant Gayatri. But they said, we will tell these ladies, don't chant Gayatri Mantra. Why not? We will chant. And the purpose is done. <laughs> See? See, where we get lost. So here, this confusion is not there. Whether you should observe the Ekadashi and eat two times on Dvadashi or twelve times rather. Dvadashi, eat twelve times. None of this problem, whether you go to temple or don't go to temple, whether you take bath or don't take bath, only one uh, spiritual practice, keep your mind absolutely, immaculately pure. That is spiritual practice. It doesn't ma matter the external uh, makeup. You know, we Babajis are tailor-made Babajis. Different kinds of clothes, colors, and different kind of makeup. So the moment anybody looks, he starts suspecting confusion. And Babaji ki jai. Please remember, this is very, very important. Spiritual practice means, when we interact in the world, keep all the time attention on the quality of mind that is constantly maintained. See how important it is. Therefore, Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kastidyata this is hai. So many people want to walk the spiritual path, but rare indeed is the one who has kept this thing in view. Our spiritual practice is go and take a mass diksha. Isn't it? Take the mic. Ah, Bhakto ki jai ho. Because of them only we are surviving there. Bhakto ki jai ho. And thereafter, now there are three mantras written. Select whichever you want. And keep your paper signed and uh, oath taken. And uh, don't forget to uh, staple your filled envelope. And drop it there. And you go. We get whatever we want. You may get whatever you want. See, Bhagwan is not telling that. Here is a clear, open picture. Whatever you are, husband, wife, young, old, businessman, a government servant or anybody, always keep attention only on this one point. Keep your mind pure, pure, pure. Why we will not progress on this path? But the problem is, we have taken for granted. That my mind is the correct mind. What I think, that alone is right. All others cannot think as I can think. This is called as Duragraha. Duragraha means obsession in English. You know, we all have uh, different kinds of those uh, rings, isn't it? Yesterday I went to somebody's house for dinner. A Marwadi family, very sweet people. And they have got three, four small, small kids. And one of the girls, she said, Are, our mobile Swami has come. 
because they got a mobile. And this is a very peculiar Swami. He doesn't have any of these, you know, what do you call uh, rings. He doesn't have any kind of these malas. And you know, he talks English wonderful. And he doesn't say Ram Ram Ram. He says hi. He shakes hand with us. This kind of brand is okay for us. Now see, tell me, what is important in life is not the external paraphernalia. Let our mind remain so pure that anybody around us, like the magnet is in the center, the steel pieces are attracted in the same manner. The magnetism of divinity starts manifesting when the mind is immaculately pure. And another problem. When your mind starts getting purer and purer, as a matter of byproduct, like we uh, keep the cows for milk. Byproduct is gober gas. We don't keep the cows for gober gas. In the same manner, when you are keeping your mind purer, calm and quiet, as a result of which all the divine powers which were till this moment dormant in you, they start surfacing. And what is that surfacing of the dormant power? That is called as the Siddhis, the divine powers. And the divine power is, you say something to somebody, Dekho beta ho jayega, and it happens. And then the people say, Swamiji, Swamiji Maharaj, you told, and it happened. And then immediately, Babaji becomes very famous. And the people start gathering around. And more and more people, more and more institutions, more and more money, more and more ashram, siddhi. And in that, one case totally lost. Aye the hari bhajana ko, totan lage kapas. I remember one of my friends is no more. He has constructed a very big ashram. Very elderly Mahatma, and is no more. He did his tapasya so deep and so great he was. But this NRI is, you know, we should be very careful about this NRI. Very detrimental to They said, uh, Maharaj, Maharaj, we will, you know, provide you funds and you start some ashram. So when we come, and then it will be good for, you know, we to come and stay and this thing, that thing. And for them, anyway, dollar is a problem. So they started pouring. And on some wrong moment, maybe Prarabdha or Bhagwan's Leela, he accepted. Last eight years of his life, instead of chanting Ram, 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 he started counting cement donkeys 20, per donkey 3 bags. Bricks 25 donkeys per hour. And slowly, slowly, Bhagwan disappeared, a donkey remained. He got so disgusted. He said, Swamiji, I don't know what we should do now. See? Therefore, when we walk on the spiritual path, all the divine power starts surfacing in us. And that time, let us not get tempted and attracted by the enchantment of this world and the success in the material world. There was a great saint, Swami Akhandanji writes in one of his books. This happened probably somewhere in Punjab, Amritsar or somewhere. He was sitting in a temple like a unclaimed beggar. And just sitting there and simply sitting, doing nothing. So people used to give him some food and all, and there is to him. When your satsang is going on, from there only he will listen. One day, there was one Mahatma who was delivering talks on Brahma Sutra. 
and this uh, beggar was simply listening and while giving his interpretation or lecture he got caught up in some logic because brahma sutra is lot and lot of logic various kinds of arguments he got caught up and he said i think i am getting confused i don't know at this stage tomorrow i'll tell you if i understand if i remember that time this beggar casually told mahatma ji is it like this and all the problem was resolved immediately that mahatma he was a great person immediately he came and touched the feet of that beggar and he said in the disguise of the beggar you are some adhut shreshtha mahatma and i salute to you the moment this happened that mahatma knew from tomorrow there will be long queue because that mahatma who is on the stage he came and touch my feet so he must be superior and public what they want how to encash from everything including god so that very night he disappeared never came back to that place again because the purpose of our life is only one attain perfection and merge in the perfect there is no other purpose of our life in this world so many people have come and so many things are done it has never given them fulfillment if we are really scientific minded let us keep the perfect goal in nagpur probably there was one uh, elderly man i went to see him nagpur or somewhere i don't remember i went to see him he was some doctor some somebody and he was in doctorate so everybody was calling him doc sir doc sir doc sir so i went i said doc sir how are you everything fine i came to know you are not well so i just come to see you how you are he told everybody hey you all go i want to talk to swami ji so all the clear and i was sitting he started crying i said babu ji kya ho gaya why are you crying he said don't call me doctor the why it is the same doctorate because of which i got this doctorate my research work and my own student has proved it is totally wrong and i only signed that thesis and he is also doctor so i am a doctor of ignorance and he is a doctor of wisdom and yet in this world i am called as the boss this cheating in myself is killing me friends at the old time of our life two things persecute us one thing kimahagam sadhuna karavam second thing kimahagam asadhu why did i not do good when i was young and why did i do something wrong which i should not have done the load of guilt and fear is more than the whole universe on our head see and therefore the most essential thing in our life is only one discover yourself remove the identity crisis see our first chapter we started if you remember the whole problem of our life is only identity crisis arjuna was confused in the first chapter what is his identity whether he is a warrior on the battlefield or he is a grandson to bhishma acharya or he is a disciple of drona acharya that was his crisis of identity and because of this identity crisis he could not function and bring out the best in him so if we want to perform the best in us the only way is let us have the right identity about ourselves who we are are we husband wife brother sister children elder citizens hindus muslim what is our correct identity and when you go deep into it then you come to know all the surfaces are full of differences but the core is but one and looking at that one substratum 
when you function in this world your performance is far excellence and it is possible therefore yatatam api siddhanam kaschin mam vetti tatvatah mam tatvatah kaschin vetti tatvatah means essentially very few recognize it, recognize me essentially essentially means what what is the essence of our being this mam word you can interpret take it our own being very few are able to know what they are am i the body am i the prana the breathing am i the mind am i the intellect am i the ignorance am i a limited suffering uh, miserable sinner or i am that one reality supporting the total world of names and forms the moment this identity crisis is sorted out he will see we will play the game of life and enjoy just like we play with our children you must have played i don't know there was once i went to somebody's house and there was time for food so i thought sitting with the elders means eating head so i found out a child i said hey what are the games you have got he said i have got that snake and ladder and then i have got uh, this carrom i said let's play carrom <laughs> so we started playing carrom now i can't play when i hit it goes there so when he is looking that way i used to put it in the hole he used to get so angry so angry swami you are cheating i said no how can a swami cheat he doesn't know swami is alone cheat <laughs> so when he started and he started crying called his mother i said no mama i am not cheating i said anyway now start mummy is judgment they are uh, watching us now and then i stopped my game naturally he won and when he won he was so happy and i was lost and yet i was happy because in that loss also there was a game because it was just a game for the sake of fun there was nothing like victory or defeat in the same manner when you come to discover your essential nature all your gains losses friends enemy everything is only a puppet show it has no value whatsoever kaschin mam veti tatvatah therefore wiser you go grow not go wiser you grow lighter becomes your life see the weight is directly proportionate rather inversely proportionate to the wisdom heavy weight champion you are you are ignorant most and the more ignorant you are more miserable you are more miserable you are more egoistic you are more egoistic you are nobody can help you see the mathematics therefore kaschin mam vetti tatvatah very few ever think about their own correct identity now after having said bhagwan tells about him what is he now whatever is the identity of the lord the same is our identity provided we are courageous enough to accept the divinity as our essential nature but if we have trained our self right from childhood papo ham pap karma ham vishva karma ham ho and suffer why condemn our self please remember this thing as much we should respect others we must respect ourselves as we should not condemn anybody in this world so also we should not condemn ourselves in this world see how important it is condemnation comes when our identity is with the matter which is constantly putrefying therefore who is this i the lord knows and we do not know in the fourth chapter bhagwan said bahu nimevati tani janmani tavajadina 
धान्य हम वेद सर्वाणी नक्षो में अर्जुन यू एंड मी हैव टेकन मेनी बर्थ बट यू डोंट नो आई नो एवरीथिंग एंड देयर फॉर आई एम प्लेइंग द गेम ऑफ लाइफ एंड यू हैव बिकम सो सीरियस एज इफ इट इज द एंड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सी द बेस्ट एग्जांपल आई कैन थिंक ऑफ ही इज व्हाट मस्ट बी द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ भगवान श्री कृष्ण when he was living in this world through an example only we can think of an actor he is acting on the stage and he is crying away because that is the part he is suffering he is crying all tragedy has come on him and he is performing the part so beautifully perfect that the real character is brought out through his performance as a result all the audience taking out the tissue papers and wiping the tears which were flown directed through the nose you know the modern way of crying is not through eyes they cry through nose and they don't take the pallu or the hanky they take the tissue paper disposable so they will start crying and this actor is performing now what is going on in the mind of the actor in his words if i had to tell you are beogufo i am paid for crying and you are paying for seeing the crying and crying isn't it in the same manner in this world there is nothing worth that deserves the bargain of our peace of mind the most valuable thing in this world is our peace of mind and this can happen only if you have got a right identity if you are riding on the vehicle of mind you will be buffeted up and down but if you can stand apart from the modifications of the mind you can watch the game of life and yet stay in your own pristine glory this is the beauty of this knowledge therefore kashchin maam vetti tatvadaha now the teacher tells about what the world is remember the promise given by the teacher was i shall tell you that knowledge having known which everything is known nothing remains to be known so the knowledge is about what knowledge is about one what the world is second who is the individual who is functioning in this world third who is the god who is uh, controlling the world and the individual and his fate and fourth what is the reality behind this relative uh, mutually dependent variable called as the world the individual and the god these are the four factors which will be analyzed in this chapter if we know this thing perfectly well you can play the game of life like bhagwan shri krishna played you know the greatness of bhagwan shri krishna when parikshit ji was born still because of the attack of the brahmastra sent by the ashwatthama to uttara and when she said oh lord please uh, enliven the child or else our dynasty will be destroyed do something and that time that great master out of a uh, natural state of undisturbed existence says if i have even this much iota of biasness in favor of pandavas and against kauravas this child should not become enliven see can we say that i have absolute love no biasness for anything or anybody in this world we cannot say i can say this except my neighbor how to see god in the neighbor 
I think never is a species created by the God where from he has gone away. And only Rakshasa remains there. See? That is why these are the words of experience told by the Lord himself. Now what is the word? Now the teacher says what is the word? Bhumi, earth, apaha, the waters, analaha, the fire, vayuhu, the air, and kham, the space, manaha, the mind, buddhi, the intellect, ahankara, the sense of uh, keeping the things together. Ahankara means something like, uh, when our body is alive, all the five elements are kept together. When the body is dead, slowly, slowly the five elements start disintegrating. The air goes to the element air. The heat of the body goes back to the element fire. Then the water of the body slowly goes back to the element water. The earth element again reduces to the earth. And a space which was occupied by the body is released to the total space. But what is that which keeps the five elements in a form which behaves like a body? That principle is called as Anka. So, these are the eight. Iti yamme bhinna prakruti rashtada. So, the Lord says, what is this world? The world has got these eight different factors. Now, see how technically sound it is. We don't have to believe. Please remember. And this is only the acuteness of observation. Whenever an observer is under the influence of any mental tension or stress, his observation cannot be unbiased. And an unbiased observation cannot give you the correct results. That is why it is necessary that our mind is of the highest quality, then we can understand. Now see, when we study, let us say for example, uh, botany. In that botany class, when we go, the teacher tells us, there are so many genres, there are so many families, and in this family, these are the characteristics, in that family, these are the characteristics. How do we study? Do we start doubting? Sir, I don't believe in I don't think there can be so many trees. Or if we are studying zoology, there are different kinds of uh, living beings. Some are vertebrates, some are non-vertebrates. Among the vertebrates, so many. Among the non-vertebrates, so many. And these are the life cycle. I don't think, sir, I believe. Please remember, we begin our journey only with the belief. And after you know, you don't require to believe anything. About this belief, I'll tell you one very good story. This happened. There was one child. Very intelligent. I think I told this story to you sometime. <laughs> he was not studying. A small child, about four years. Parents died. Because he used to ask one question. Why A is written like this? Now there is no reply. Why A is written like this? So, uh, and you know the mothers, they always glorify the foolishness of the child as intelligence. That is called as the species called as mother. So, uh, Swami did, see, I don't know how to teach him. And he always asks such intelligent questions, even the teachers don't have answers. I have paid. She said, even I have paid. That means, even under life, even I have paid. I said, Amma, let me try. And then, I said, okay, after food, I'll talk to him. We finish our lunch. I said, you come to my room. I said, you don't have to come. I will teach my own way. Don't worry, nothing will happen. And we sat inside. I said, look here. I start now writing A for Apple. He took out the trump card. Swamiji, please tell me. Why A is written like this? Now, did you tell me anyone of you why it is written like this? No reply. Look, we are never bothered because we are not fools. Now, this child took up this challenge. Why is it written like this? Now, the reply I gave and I treated the case. 
I showed him my hand. Do you see this hand? Yes. I said, A is like this because if it is not like this, this hand will come down with a speed of 2000 miles per second and it will land on your face very hard. Therefore, A is like this. You want to know anything? <laughs> now, what is the logic? A is like that. And slowly, slowly, in five minutes, I told him how to write his name, how to write his father's name, how to write his mother's name. I didn't go the routine, useless way. A, B, C, D, E, A, G, A. No. And after that, I say, now look here. I sleep. You simply sit here. You also sleep. And when we go out, we have a cup of tea. That time, casually, you take your paper pencil and start writing. Let mommy, daddy watch. You don't talk to them. And then they say, hey, you can write my name and see what a joy it is. And we did that game. And when he got appreciation from his mother, father, he has learned. He was so happy. He said, I want to have Swamiji as my KG1 teacher, Ram. I said, I teach quintals, not KGs. Those who have got quintals of ignorance, to them only I teach. See? Therefore, we have to begin with this. Don't start doubting. But how can you say that there are five elements? Show the sixth one. Five elements. So these are the five elements. Then the mind. Then the intellect and ahankar. Now please remember. These are explained here at the level of the cause. Causative level. Now find out is there anything other than this in this world? When we talk about the world, for us, world means what? Iraq, America. For us, world means what? The bull running up, the bull running down. For us, the uh, world means what? There are, uh, there is famine, there is no water anywhere. For us, the world means what? Uh, sometime rally, sometime rela. Is it? it? Sometime Trishul rally, sometime Danda rally. See? This is our world. Now here is the scientific definition. World means five great elements. The mind, the intellect and the ahankar which is keeping all of them put together. Now out of this only the whole world is made. It is not that in the body of a Swami there are six elements. And in the body of a grasta there may be three, three and a half. No. It is the same five elements. It is not in the body of a, a leader, there are five elements. And in the body of the water, there are two elements. No. All the body is whether that of Brahmaji or that of a mosquito. The same five elements have gone into manufacture. Therefore, when we talk about the world, these are the eight different factors. This is called as the Ashtadha Prakriti. Now, this is not the important topic. What I spoke to you. My God, then what is the important topic? Now, the most important word in this verse. If you have got paper, pencil, underline this verse. Bhagavad says, Bhumi rapo nalo vayu khammano buddhirevacha ahankaram iti yam me. Underline me. Bhagavad says, this is my prakriti. Not our See the difference? If God is our daddy, this Prakriti is his wife and therefore our mom. What is our relationship with our mother? That of yoga or yoga. That of indulgence or service. Think. See, in such a small way, the teacher has given the highest wisdom. This world is not meant for indulgence and enjoyment. This world is meant to serve seeing the divinity in and through everything and being. 
when our attitude of indulgence disappears and that of reverence and service is kindled in our heart understand you are going the right way as long as we are living our whole life only for enjoyment 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 you know this consumerism he is the ramana philosophy and that has started now slowly slowly coming in our life in our country everywhere earlier they used to say that uh save more and spend with whatever you have stitch your coat according to the cloth or spread your legs according to your bed sheet now it is the other way around first of all spend the money and then start earning isn't it they don't have debit cards credit cards <laughs> dirty thing therefore here the teacher says that let our life be not that of indulgence and involvement but that of dignified existence as a human being if human beings start living like animals there is a uh, composition by great saint king bhartrhari there he writes very beautifully he says that <laughs> once somebody a man was <laughs> compared with the animals <clears throat> so all the animals had a meeting and they have told kindly don't compare the animal the man with the animals if the man was like an animal he would have eaten all the grass by now and nothing would have been left for us therefore our life is not meant only for indulgence and enjoyment then what is the purpose of our life as i told in the beginning the purpose of our life is only one in this world we have come to allow the divine presence manifest through us your only purpose don't bother to get the vision of god please prove uh, rather save him now take for example when i have constructed a house now who will decide what to do with that house the windows or the bricks or the flooring or the ceiling or the electrical fitting or the person who is hiring the house no it is i the owner who decides in the same manner we if we are created by him what is the purpose of our creation or what is the purpose behind our creation is determined by him and therefore we have no purpose in life except allowing his vision to be fulfilled through our life <clears throat> how simple life becomes and this is what is called as very simple spiritual life now the question is but what do we know what for god has created us i'll tell you story <coughs> god created first stones and bricks and he didn't like it maza nahi aaya then he created the plant kingdom <clears throat> that also did not attract his mind then he created animals <clears throat> so okay they are moving here and there maza nahi aaya and then he was frustrated brahma ji frustrated means four times <laughs> has four heads and he has got four hands also so with each hand each head holding together frustrated brahmani came hey what's wrong with you see i have been doing creation i got fed up frustrated i don't know nothing is coming out good you must have seen sometime you know you want to do something nothing comes out good you get frustrated so brahmani got frustrated 
And when he got frustrated, Brahmani said, Shall I suggest you something? Oh, oh, now you have to teach me about creation. So Brahmani said, Look here, even a dead clock gives two times correct time. Don't underestimate me. Okay, then what should I do? Why don't you create somebody like you, but with one head? With your four heads, I am tired. One head is enough. Brahmati says, hey, you are a genius, of course. Otherwise, why will I select you? <clears throat> so, God created man in his image. And when he created man, he congratulated himself, Sukrutam Vai Sukrutam, well done, well done. Now what is that he has achieved through man? In the stones and bricks, the inner creation, there is only existence. In the plant, there is existence and little signs of life. In animals, there is existence, little signs of life, and little more expression of life. But in man alone, there is complete expression of the Lord. There is existence, there is knowledge, and there is smile. Man alone is blessed with the ability to smile. Animals don't smile, except in your Disneyland. Natural animals don't smile. So if the Lord has created us to express His will, what is His will? Will Lord want to be miserable? If He is Ananda Swarupa, if He is of the nature of absolute bliss, a blissful expression cannot be a frowning expression. It has to be happiness. And therefore, friends, to allow the Lord to manifest through us is only one thing. Spread the divine bliss and happiness in and around you without any reservation. That you can do only under one condition. When you do not have the selfish tinge in your lifestyle, a selfish man cannot distribute happiness. Because he is selling fish. Isn't it? All stink. So, the Lord has created this world. It is His world. And in His world, we have no business to get involved in indulgence. There is only one way. And that is, serve the world with all love and reverence. See, the whole life will change. But when we are all the time engaged only in ahu, 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 all the time glitter, light and all excitement and speed, we are going far away from the truth. So this is what the world is and this is how we should look at the world. Two points are told by the Lord. What the world is and what should be our attitude when we interact with the world. This philosophy that the Lord has created the world for man to enjoy is not the right kind of philosophy. We are not born here as animals to enjoy. Even animals have control, isn't it? See, I went for a peace conference recently in Bangalore. And they had so many speakers from all over the world. And the last valedictory well session, I went there. And they had a very big board in the Bangalore University, very nicely made, everything was so good. And the peace naturally they show with a kabutar. Safed kabutar is the messenger of peace. The door. So when they showed that, after everything was over, the organizer, the vice chancellor, everybody says, Swamiji, how do you like our symbol and all that thing we brought out? I said, it's very good, excellent. But instead of this bird, if you had kept a swan, it would have been better. He said, no, in the whole world they use only this kabutar as the messenger of peace. I said, do you know what this kabutar is? 
this is the only bird in all the birds in the world who is constantly engaged in indulgence other birds don't do that when this indulging birds they are the sign of peace you can understand the quality of peace so when i said Swami, so, I mean, you have hit on our feet itself. I said, no, I am talking only to you, not to the public. When fools are uh, able to buy any foolish material, you sell. You are sitting in a shop. See how important it is. Therefore, our philosophy should not be the philosophy of the kabutars. It should be the philosophy of the swan. Lead in the dignity of a human being with self-control. dedication cheer and absence of selfishness then see why we will not grow and attain the absolute happiness in our life bhumi rapo nalo vayu kham mano buddhi revacha ahankaram iti yam me bhinna prakruti rashtha friends <coughs> this change in attitude converts a dynamically active struggling corporate personality into loving sacrificing and a creative person called as the devotee of the lord as much the devotees have created peace in this world so much all the corporates put together are now not put together so ahankaram iti yamme bhinna prakruti rashtha now the second aspect of the total creation apare yamita stanya prakritim vidhime param jeeva bhuta mahabaho jayetam dharyate jagat so up to this ashtadha uh, prakriti this is apara this is my lower nature this is my lower uh, aspect now what is the higher aspect higher aspect is vidhime uh, prakritim param jeeva bhuta now here there is a little uh, subtle understanding to be understood see god is present everywhere in the stones in the plants in the animals in the human beings in the living beings in the dead beings even the dead body is not left by the god so in the dead body also god is yes then the question is the god is present in the dead body also and in the living body also but there is something because of which the living body becomes dead so can't we say that this principle is more valuable than the god thing because after this principle leaves the body the body becomes dead so what is that principle and this principle is referred in our scriptures as the jiva or the soul now what is the jiva or the soul this is a very highly technical subject i'll just tell you in short and explain to you in our tomorrow's class in exhaustive detail if we understand this principle of jiva or the ego then all the problems will be dissolved see it is something like every uh thing in this world has its own dormant potentiality and when that potentiality is dormant there is no functioning and when the potentiality is involved involved there is functioning for example like you know we go to so many places and everywhere everybody doesn't know us so like once i went to pune probably and there was this uh, national institute of human resources now those all the necktie brand people together in that hot summer with the necktie on that is the corporate world so they were all sitting and when i went for that uh, tom there naturally baba ji aa gaya started 
after the talk was over so many people will come and talk and ask hundred question before that looking like a animal from a zoo now what is the change change is what was inside was not manifested the moment it was manifested a personality is reflected in the same manner god is everywhere but that dormant potentiality where it is not manifested it is called as dead and where it is manifested it is called as life and this manifesting principle is called as the soul or the jiva and once we understand this manifesting principle as soul or the jiva what is our relationship with that and how the differences can be dissolved into oneness this is the second important topic and once we understand this topic we will see transcending the limitation of the individuality is a matter of a snap it's not difficult how it is what it is in next episode om purnamada purnamidam purnaat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम